Pennies in a Jar, written by Dory Chaconis and illustrated by Ted Lewin. The day Dad went away to war, I cried. He hugged me and he told me to be brave, but I was so afraid of everything. Like how Mom and I had to take care of things by ourselves now, and the loud noises in our neighborhood when they tested the air raid sirens, and thinking about Dad listening to bombs and guns. I was even afraid of everyday things, especially the street horses. We used to sit on the front porch steps, me and Dad. Now I sat there by myself and counted the pennies in my green glass jar. Dad's birthday was coming up. I was saving to buy him a present. Something special, just for me. Mom said she would mail my present overseas with the socks she was knitting. I heard the ragman holler from a block away. Lickety split, I tore into the house and grabbed the bundle of newspapers from the pantry. Then I slammed back through the screen door, bang, and grunted the newspapers out to the curb. A street horse named Josefina was pulling the rag wagon down our street. The ragman sat high on a wooden seat. Rags, clop to clop. Newspapers, rags, clop to clop. Whoa! The ragman called when he saw my bundle of papers. He dropped a heavy iron disc on the pavement. Thonk! So that Josefina wouldn't walk off. It looked like the horse stopper was the anchor and Josefina was the ship. The heavy smell of horse filled my nose and mouth. Josefina swung her head around and looked straight at me. Her teeth were as big as piano keys. I jumped back. Had Josephina ever bitten anyone? My dad got bitten by a horse once when he was a kid. He had a moon-shaped scar right on his shoulder. Horses are like people, son, he said. Sometimes you meet a, meet a real stinker, but most of them are good. The rag man threw my newspapers into the back of the wagon. Every bit helps, he said. For the war effort, got any scrap iron? It's good for building ships and airplanes. I thought about the iron horseshoe over our back door. Dad nailed it up there to look like a capital U. That way it will catch good luck and hold it in, Dad said. If you hang it upside down, all the good luck might fall out. It wasn't a good idea to sell a lucky horseshoe. I wouldn't want any bad luck to keep my dad from coming home from the war. Only the newspapers, I told the ragman, keeping my eye on his horse. She gave a loud snort, ready to move on. You want to feed her a carrot? The ragman asked. I took a step back and shook my head. Not today, I said. The man shrugged. Well, maybe next time. I went back to the front porch and counted my pennies all over again, dropping them back into my green glass jar. Fifty-six. Tuesdays and Fridays were milk days. Mr. Lacey was our milkman, and his street horse was named Nell. Good morning to you. Mr. Lacey called out when Nell stopped in front of our house. I watched Mr. Lacey line up three bottles of milk on our porch. He put our three empty bottles into his wire basket. Can I carry those for you, Mr. Lacey? I asked. The bottles in the baskets bumped against my leg. When Nell saw Mr. Lacey, she nickered and threw her head up and down. She stamped her foot. I made a fast stop at the edge of the sidewalk. My dad's not afraid of horses, I blurted out. He grew up on a farm. Mr. Lacey looked at me kind of funny, and then he nodded and gave me a penny for helping. Nell was already moving to the next house. Dad said that after he got bitten, he never wanted to go near a horse again but Grandpa needed him to help with the chores. If something is important enough, you just have to do it, Dad told me, even if you're scared. 
Once a week, the garbage wagon came by. It was pulled by Billy and Bailey, the biggest street horses of all. They had feet as big and heavy as buckets filled with iron. Whoa! Albert called, holding the reins. Two other men carried canvas baskets on their shoulders to collect the garbage. They scooped it up and dumped it into the open wagon. If my dad were here, he could drive that team, I called to Albert. He used to drive my grandpa's hay wagon. I rode on the back of it once. Want to ride on the back of this wagon? Albert asked, chuckling. I held my nose and shook my head. On a hot summer day, the garbage wagon smelled worse than an army of skunks. No, thanks. <laughs> Albert just laughed again. Billy and Bailey suddenly shook themselves. <laughs> Their traces and braces jangled and jumped. I jumped, too, and ran back to the porch. I was glad when the garbage wagon was gone. That afternoon, I sat on the porch step writing a letter. Dad, I wish you could come home, I began. If you were here... I closed my eyes and thought about a hundred things I wanted to tell my dad, but I didn't know how to sort them all out. A soft snort made me open my eyes. On the sidewalk, right in front of my house, stood a man with a pony. The pony had a saddle on his back, and his mane and tail shimmered in the sun. Hey, kid, the man called out. You want to ride this here pony? Me? I asked. A large camera hung around the man's neck. I'll take a picture of you on the pony. Only 50 cents. I didn't want to tell the man I was afraid. W what's the pony's name? I asked. His name is Freedom. Freedom, I whispered. Dad went away to war to fight for freedom. Dad would like that name. If my dad were here, I started to say, but my dad wasn't here. I shook my head. No, thanks, mister. I watched the man and his pony walk away. A sadness as big as a melon filled up the inside of me. What would dad think if he saw me now? And then I remembered what he had said if something is important enough, you just have to do it. That was when I knew exactly what kind of special birthday present I wanted to buy my dad with the pennies in my green glass jar. And I knew it was something important. Hey, mister, I shouted. Hey, mister, come back. I ran down the sidewalk after him. My heart was pounding. I do want my picture taken with freedom. The photographer stopped, and he opened his big canvas bag. He pulled out a soft leather vest trimmed with fringes. He slipped it on me, and I felt its weight against my shoulders and my back. And then he plopped a real cowboy hat right on my head. Well, it looked real anyway. My knees felt like noodles, but I tried as hard as I could to be brave. The man helped me into the saddle. It was slippery smooth, and I started to slide. My heart punched against my ribs. I was going to fall off this horse. Hold on with your knees, kid, the photographer said. I squeezed them tight as he began leading freedom back toward my house. I swayed back and forth in the saddle, but I didn't slip again. I was riding a horse. It was a small one, but it still counted. My mom came out on the porch as freedom and I walked up. Hey, Mom, look, I'm riding a horse, I yelled. And then I laughed right out loud. Guess I don't have to tell you to smile, the man said from behind the camera. Click. The photographer helped me down from Freedom's back, and I gave the pony a goodbye pat. Then I ran to get my green glass jar, and I counted out 50 pennies. You're going to have one humdinger of a picture, that man told me. And here's the note I wrote to my dad. 
Dear Dad, here's a special birthday present just for me. The pony's name is Freedom, and guess what? Remember the ragman's horse with the big teeth? Yesterday I fed her a carrot. She even slobbered all on my hand. You don't have to worry about anything here at home, Dad. I'm taking care of things. P.S. Isn't this picture a real humdinger? The End